the first pieces of the inheritance puzzle will be put together far away in the Czech Republic. And the evidence is buried in an obscure scientific paper published in 1866. First thing you notice about this original copy is it's not in English, it's in the German. Secondly, it's written by a monk. And thirdly, it's about peas. Gregor Mendel had been growing varieties of pea plant that had different characteristics, like whether the peas were wrinkled or smooth, yellow or green, whether the stems were tall or short. Plant breeders had done that kind of thing many times before. What was extraordinary about Mendel was he repeated the experiment again and again and again. And even more critically, he wrote down the numbers of each kind of plant that he got in each generation. Mendel treats plant breeding as a science. And he spots something very odd in the numbers he's written down. The ratio of tall plants to short, or wrinkled to smooth, is always the same. Nobody had ever noticed this before. These patterns hold vital clues to understanding inheritance. But for 35 years, nobody in the scientific community understands its significance. In 1884, Mendel dies, and his work disappears into obscurity. That is, until the turn of the 20th century, when Mendel would gain his greatest champion, William Bateson. Bateson's a Cambridge University zoologist. Plants fascinate him, but he's more used to working with animals. He wants to see if he can find the same inheritance patterns in animals as Mendel got with his peas. This is William Bateson's makeshift laboratory. For years, he runs a series of experiments wherever he can, in his own garden, even in a disused church. This is because the authorities at Cambridge University believe his work on understanding inheritance is incomprehensible and therefore futile. So his funding is pitiful. Bateson's career at Cambridge had started as manager of the college kitchens. Hardly a promising sign of future success in science. But if you have to say one thing about Bateson, he is tenacious. He has an unshakable belief that he is on the verge of discovering something of huge importance. Wherever Bateson goes, the whiff of animal droppings soon follows. Ever since a colleague gave him a copy of Mendel's paper, Bateson's been hooked on inheritance. He wants to know if the patterns of inheritance Mendel got in peas are the result of a set of universal laws across the whole of the living world. And that includes plants. His plan is to crossbreed all kinds of different animals and to do the same for plants, a hugely laborious task. Without a team of helpers and no budget to pay for one, it will be impossible. But Bateson sees an opportunity to tap into an underused workforce on his doorstep. The students of Cambridge's Newnham College. They are the perfect workforce, fiercely intelligent, unemployed, and they're all female. They become known as Bateson's ladies. Bateson and the ladies get cracking, and they start by looking for patterns of inheritance in chickens. <laughs> so this is the sort of experiment they do. They cross a black cockerel and a black hen and get a brood of chicks. But what intrigues them, surprises them, is that not all of the chicks are black. Some of them are white. 
And the more times they repeat the experiment, the stranger it gets. The ratio of black to white is always three to one. Every time. The parents must have passed down some instruction to cause this chick to be white and these ones to be black. Those elusive instructions we now know as genes. Genes are too small to be seen with the technology Bateson and his ladies had in their day. Genetics was a different kind of science. Bateson and his ladies use crossbreeding experiments and logic to make sense of the three black to one white ratio in their chickens. So how can you get this three to one ratio? Well, we know that both of the parents contain the information for black feathers because they are both black. But we also know that somewhere hidden inside them there is information for white feathers because between them they can produce a white bird. So there must be at least two sets of information in each parent for feather colour, one black and one white. So Bateson tries to work out how those two pieces of information could lead to the three to one ratio. And this is how he did it. Imagine that a chick gets information for black feathers from its father and information for black feathers from its mother. Or it could inherit black from dad and white from mum. Or white from dad and black from mum. Or finally, it could get information for white feathers from both of them. Bateson and his team observe that breeding from a pair of black chickens always produces three black chicks for every white chick. To explain that observation, he has to make one final logical assumption. Bateson deduces that the information for black feathers overrides the information for white. So in three of the chicks, you get black feathers. One, two, three. Only when the chick gets information for white feathers from both of its parents and no instructions for black feathers do you get a white chick. And bingo, you have your three to one, three black, one white ratio. If Bateson's explanation works for chickens, what about other animals? And why stop there? He knows that it holds true for peas, but what about other plants? Perhaps every living thing is governed by the same laws of inheritance. To find out, he'll need to look beyond his chickens. Bateson and his ladies breed pigeons, goats, guinea pigs, rabbits, mice. Wherever they look, they find the same inheritance patterns they found with their chickens, the same that Mendel found with his peas. Everywhere, in every species, the patterns are confirmed. And Bateson is blown away because he believes he has found the key to the mechanism by which all living creatures inherit the features that make them them. And the only way the ratios can be explained is if those features are passed down from generation to generation in discrete units of inheritance. A new science is born. Bateson gives it the name by which we now know it, genetics. In a matter of years, Bateson has turned from marginal eccentric into international scientific superstar. He has proved that the strange numbers Mendel first saw in peas are the result of a set of universal genetic laws. These laws explain how animal and plant characteristics are inherited in past generations and the same laws can now be used to predict how they will be inherited in future generations of plants.
But in 1903, Bateson hits a problem. There's a plant lurking at the back of his laboratory that doesn't seem to be playing according to the rules. It seems to defy everything Bateson has learned about genetics. The plant is snapdragons, and the problem is the colour of its flowers. From one generation to the next, the inheritance of colours seems utterly unpredictable. New colours seem to come out of nowhere. Yellow, crimson, magenta. Bateson has to question if the laws of genetics have reached their limit with snapdragons. So he puts one of the brightest geneticists in his female team on the case. Muriel Weldale. Weldale has an uncommon gift for making sense of complex patterns. And she loves snapdragons. Weldale sets about her task armed with state-of-the-art genetic technology. Pencil, paper, and lots of patience. Weldale has to do crossbreeding experiments just like Mendel. Weldale takes the pollen from one type of flower and crossbreeds it with another plant by dabbing the pollen on its flowers and grows new plants from the seed. Then she has to count the number of flowers of each colour that come up then repeat, hundreds of times, with hundreds of plants. It looks mind-numbing, and it is mind-numbing. And this period of genetic research was called the bean-counting period. The trick was to remain focused on solving the problem. For four years, Weldale sows and grows and counts until finally she makes a breakthrough. Weldale works out that there are several genes that influence the colour of snapdragon flowers. Every possible combination of those genes generates its own unique colour. It's a simple, secret code, and Weldale has cracked it. Now, she can predict the inheritance of these colours. Just like anything else in nature. The colours of snapdragon flowers may seem trivial and whimsical, but they reveal something fundamental to all of life on Earth. And the truth is perhaps shocking that the amazing biological diversity that we see around us does not require a supernatural explanation. It is a result of genes working together like the components of a beautiful machine. Bateson showed that Mendel's laws of inheritance were true. Weldale proved that genetics could predict the inheritance of even the most complex features. <laughs> 